We've just run a workshop on new divinatory techniques for the 21st century, um, which has been about um, providing people with the opportunity to approach, in the first instance, really long-standing and in some ways ancient um, divinatory methods, um, tea leaf reading, uh, astrology, looking at the stars, and to impart new ways of making meaning of those systems um, by coming at them with fresh eyes. Really, we were running an experiment. These are labs, and it seems appropriate that we run an experiment in a lab. We've never done this before. We really were not sure what might happen, but we both are very interested in apophenia, which is the phenomenon of how we find patterns humans find patterns in noise, in just about anything. So what we wanted to do was to take epiphenia, which is generally speaking not used as a positive term and seen as a deficit intellectually or psychologically speaking, and instead to think of it as potentially something that could be an asset, something that might be generative. So what we were looking at was what we call applied apophenia. Could we have systems, old and new, that are interpreted by different means, in other words, different patterns that are detected in them that would open up the possibility space so that you would have more than one prediction of your own future or the future for all of us. And that would allow for greater imagination in terms of how we go about what we do toward making the future that we all want. UNESCO is a, is a strange attractor for people from literally all over the world. So I think all we really knew to expect was that we would have a diverse group of participants from many different countries with some kind of interest in thinking about the future in new and constructive ways. Beyond that, we had very little sense of what to expect, um, what kind of a space we would be in, how many people. Um, we came prepared for, uh, for all eventualities. And, but what happened, um, and I think was it within range <laughs> of expectations, um, but it was, uh, it, 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 as we were saying, is an experiment. And uh, the results are just in, and I think we're uh, quite happy with how people engaged. And I think that UNESCO as a repository and promoter of cultural heritage is a really interesting and an important context in which to undertake this sort of experiment. Because what we're doing is we're looking at cultural heritage in terms of the traditions inherent in different divinatory practices, but not as something that is static or something that belongs to the past. We're trying to figure out how that past might connect to the present and to the future, which really feels like what futures literacy is about and how that connects to the larger framework of UNESCO. Um, so futures literacy uh, traditionally has meant kind of familiarity with the, uh, the methods and the techniques and the uh, concepts and the mindsets um, of, um, of, well, futures and foresight as a field. Um, I think what's interesting about the event that we're taking part in today is that it's a mixture of well-established processes um, that futures literacy denotes, you know, and has kind of referred to over years or even decades in some cases, a combination of those established processes and completely new and experimental um, test balloons. And this is actually in itself an interesting combination of the two, because while we are ref referencing and making use of um, ancient techniques, l literally in, in um, in a way, ancient techniques for uh, interpreting the world and dealing with uncertainty, we have been using today as an opportunity to try something that we have never done before and that as far as we know, no one else has done before in quite the same way either. I think that we're, we're also, we're looking at literacy as a collective activity here. These activities that we undertook involved groups of two, four, and ultimately everybody working together toward trying to understand patterns or to 
at least elicit possible worlds from patterns that they detected. And if you think about literacy and you think about what led to the whole idea of literacy, of the book, it is oral tradition. And I think that there's a way in which we are trying to circle back around to those deep origins of oral tradition in order to connect those to literacy as a concept and how literacy of the future is in fact something that needs an oral aspect and a participatory aspect in addition to the idea that you would go and you would read something or write something. <laughs> <laughs>